everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Bucker Designs, and I've got a card for you today. This is a little um, mover, a slider card using the new Curved Occasions bundle. You've got a stamp and dies. I, I love this set. I've got five projects for you on my blog, so make sure you go and check them out. This is from our new September to December catalog. I call it the holiday catalog because it has all our Christmas stuff in it. Um, but this is back here on page 64. And I really loved this card right here, so I cased it. Now mine's different, I use different colors, um, but I wanted to give it a try. I use several different things, but um, I'm gonna show you how to do this part right here, okay? Um, one thing <laughs> I'm going to point out too is I'm going to change this. This was my original sample and it didn't really think it through. So we're going to change it a little bit. We're going to put um, a piece of crumb cake behind this. And my sentiments don't make sense. Thanks a million, make today yours. No, that should say, thanks a million, you're great. I stamped the wrong thing. So we're going to correct that <laughs> on today's video, okay? Let's start with that super duper cute, cute card. I've got a quarter sheet of basic white and I'm gonna punch those clouds out of this too. So I'm gonna work up here at the top, very top corner. Memento black and you can color your car, you know, whatever you wanna color it. I'm gonna use real red. Whoops, I just went over the bumper. I did that the first time too. Don't color the bumper in the back. Try to, try to not color it. I mean, if you do, whatever, it's fine. I'm gonna use light real red first. I'm gonna work in sections, okay? So I'm gonna do the back section like that, and then I'm gonna take my dark, and I'm gonna put a shadow where that fender would be. Is that what that's called, a fender? I'm not a car person, I don't know. And then one right there, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing up here to the front section. And the reason why I like to work in sections is because your alcohol inks are designed to dry pretty quickly um, and you want to blend those shadow lines in there. So work in smaller sections so it doesn't dry before you try to start blending all that together. All right, be careful going around the light because we're using daffodil delight there. All right, now I'm gonna take that dark again, go there. I'm also gonna go along the bottom and I'm gonna go on this side of that line and up here. Now for those fenders, I'm gonna to try to blend that up a little bit. Now for those fenders, I'm gonna just do a light. We want that to be lighter than the shadow behind it. So I'm just gonna do one light little coat. Now I had a hard time deciding what to color these parts, but I decided to color the seats red and leave the convertible part and the glass just white all right and you know what i think i am missing a marker i've got my dark yeah i'm gonna have to grab it i've got my dark smoky slate and i'm gonna color that middle part dark smoky slate i thought i left that i thought i colored that in too but look at my sample it's different oh well all right now take your dark smoky slate color in the bumpers all right and then take Daffodil Delight and do your lights. Okay. And then I went over that. I think I'm gonna try to color that in with a little bit of gray as well, like that. Right. I've grabbed my basic black light. Basic black is very, very dark, even the light. So just tap your color in lightly around. I think we'll do the center black as well. Okay, just tap it in. Like that. Okay, so now we've got our cute little bug. And we're gonna cut this out with our paper snips. Cut all that extra cardstock off. And just stay on the outside edge of your car, okay? 
leave a little bit of a white border, not too much. I always call it a little cloud that will disguise any jagged cuts that you make because the eye really will only see that black line. If you stay real close and let leave the black line completely intact, when you cut into that black line is when you can really see mistakes. All right, we're getting there. Use your opposite hand to turn. Turn, 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 turn. All right, there we go. Now let's go ahead, since we have our white paper here, I'm gonna punch out one, two, three clouds with our cloud punch. And I'm gonna stamp our sentiment in real red. Thanks a million. I'm gonna put it right here on my basic white and get our cool little curved punch and punch that right there. All right, now let's look at our crumb cake pieces. We're gonna take this and we're gonna punch this on the right side, you want it to be going up, all right? So I'm gonna punch that like that and then I'm gonna turn it and do, the, do it again. Now, the one thing you wanna look at is how you're lined up here. I can never quite get it perfect, but that's okay. You wanna to try to line it up as perfect as you can. See, mine always has a little bump like that. If it does, just take your scissors and just kind of smooth it out. I mean, really, it's not a disaster. We can just smooth it out just a tiny bit. Just snip those off. There, now you can't even tell. All right, to get our guy to move through there, we're gonna use a penny. And a one penny really is, I think, too big. I used two on my original. I was hoping I could get away with one, but you're gonna be able to see it. So we're gonna do two pennies here. We're gonna do one here and one here, all right? And you're gonna need your dimensionals. We're, we're gonna use our dimensionals to attach these pennies. Um, the, you can use washers as well, but this is kind of a thick line, so I felt like we needed to um, make it, the penny is thick enough so that it won't fall out. See how it's wider? Before we do that also, I'm going to take my toothpick for my sign, and I'm going to sandwich it right here. I didn't do that last time either, and that, I thought that would make it a little bit better to hold on to that. All right, so peel the backing off and put your penny right there. Then get your other penny and put it right there. All right, now we're gonna put our pennies on the other side of this, our other pennies, like this, okay? And we're gonna stick those dimensionals right there on the penny. And then I'm gonna take my other penny and I'm gonna match it right there. So I've made it so that the pennies are sandwiching the crumb cake paper. Hopefully you can see that, okay? So now let's do this one as well. Um, we'll put, let's do this right here. Take your dimensional, get the straight edge to line up with the straight edge of the curve. And then take your other penny and line it up. And now it will drive through. It doesn't really slide, well maybe it does, but it works better if you do like that with your hand. Isn't that adorable, so, so fun. Okay, so now I wanted to put, I wanted to put this on a crumb cake backing so that's what we're going to do crumb cake the same size this information will be on a free pdf over on my blog make sure that you grab it it's yours to keep has measurements and supply list um, these pennies are heavy so be generous with your adhesive so that it doesn't fall apart all right now we're gonna lay that on there, perfectly matching it. All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, lovely. Now we've got this little guy. We're gonna attach him here. Um, I The sample in the catalog had it flagged, so I'm gonna do that too. 
cut a line in the middle and then go from the outside corners to make your little banner. Um, I just attached this with glue dots. I think glue dots are your best option for this. And we'll put it right there. We're gonna add a little bow to it in a minute. So then it just is gonna drive through our cute little, <laughs> our cute little card. Whoever came up with this at Stampin' Up, they need, they need to be rewarded because it's very cute. All right, we're gonna emboss this, these clouds. I believe this embossing folder is called Brush Strokes, but don't quote me. I am horrible at remembering names. I'll have it listed for you on the supply list. And they used a different embossing folder as well. I just thought out of my embossing folders, what I have, I thought that this one worked well. Ah, I forgot. Take off plate two, you guys. When you have a thick embossing folder, all you need is plate one and then the plate four. Okay. So now we've got some textured clouds like that. And we will get our card base. And let's put this guy on here. I'm gonna use, you know, uh, Stamp and Seal Plus would probably be really good here. And I don't have it here on my desk, but because this is heavy with those pennies, I'm gonna be really generous with that adhesive. Oh, and what it, you know what? I forgot to stamp the other sentiment right here. Dagnabbit, I forgot. Oh well, we'll just leave it off. All right, let's take some dimensionals. I'm getting down to the bottom of my dimensionals. Let's see if I can make this work. We're gonna put one like that, and we'll put one over here, and we'll take one, and we're just gonna have the bottom of this one like that. All right, so then you wanna just trim them off, matching the edges of your card, like that. And there is your cute guy. Oh, I wanna stamp that. I may get out my Stamparatus and fix that because I have the dimensionals there, I can't do it. All right, last but not least, let's add a white twine bow and you will be done. I hope you guys enjoyed this card. I had so much fun putting this together. It's a fun interactive card that I think anybody would appreciate. You can change that sentiment too to happy birthday if you want. All right, make sure you click the link on my blog. Go back, check out the, the details, and let me know if you have questions. Happy stamping. Bye-bye.